for rape and kidnapping for her role in a sexual assault. I'm Ellie Merritt. And I'm Dwayne Pullman. Investigators say she was live streaming the assault on Periscope. Marina Lonina and Raymond Gates both in court today. NBC4's Renee LaSalle joins us live with more. And Renee, these are simply horrific charges. Yeah, Dwayne, this is a pretty tough case. We've got a long list of charges for both co-defendants. Now, they appeared here at the Franklin County Courthouse today, those charges, including kidnapping, rape, and sexual battery. But the victim in this case is only 17. That's why Marina Lonina faces additional felony charges for videotaping the alleged attack of her minor. She's going to be fully cooperative conditions thereof. Public defenders also be appointed. Go back on the record. Uh, my client and the victim and his high school chums, classmates, they met this guy at East in the day before uh, when they were out shopping. He comes on to them, he encourages them with alcohol, uh, buys them a bottle of vodka that day, further encourages them to meet the next day, which my client's friend, the victim, uh, wanted to do. My client is, is along for the ride, so to speak. Uh, she's in the habit of filming everything with this app called Periscope. Does in fact film this encounter. Uh, we've watched it at various times. She's trying to get her friend out of there. Friend. A 17 year old friend of hers was sexually assaulted on camera, and the 19 year old girl and her accomplice were both sentenced to prison. This incident occurred on February 2016, and Ramon Gates and the girl's attacker entered a guilty plea and received a nine year sentence, although Marina has only been serving for nine months. The prosecutor stated that the two were indicated on Wednesday on a number of charges, including rape, sexual battery, kidnapping, and promoting sexually explicit content involving a minor. Obviously, this is sick behavior from both individuals. This is just the tip of the iceberg from sexual explicit images from minors on the app itself to Twitter shutting down the app in 2017 and many more. Hope you enjoy the content, leave a like and subscribe and let's jump right into it. Kevon Beckpour and John Bernstein founded Periscope, a mobile application developed in the United States in 2015. Shortly before the app's launch, Twitter acquired it. The concept for Periscope originated when Beckpour was traveling abroad as the pool. When a protest erupted near Texim Square, he went to Twitter to find out more about what was going on. He could read up on the details, but he couldn't find any videos of it. Back around February of 2014, back when the company was called Bounty, they raised around $1.5 in investments from Maveron, Google Ventures, Mino Ventures, and StarX, to name a few. May 2015 to August 2015, Periscope reached over 10 million accounts four months after launch, January 2016, released an update that allows users to stream live from a GoPro, and since then some of the features got incorporated into the Twitter's app. The Florida rapper chose to speak to his fans after he got released from jail. He was using Periscope and going live from Miami radio station due to X passing away and that he can't defend himself, I would say that these photos that have been shown is him and his girlfriend getting back together after getting arrested for domestic violence. I have this segment in here to show that even celebrities were using this application frequently at the time. Now, let's move on. An unnamed French woman died live in Periscope. Just moments prior to her death, the woman messaged one of her friends to inform them of her intentions. According to a prosecutor, she also posted a statement on the internet for those who wanted to see it. During the footage, a judicial source indicated sexual assault as well as a named aggressor. The video of the woman's actual death, which occurred on Tuesday at a station in Ingley, south of Paris. Periscope took down the video shortly after, but some of it is still online available on YouTube. The woman in the video is smoking a cigarette and explains in the video, quote, not designed to create a buzz, but to try to make people react, to open their minds, and nothing else. The clip then cuts to black, despite authority figures faintly audible in the background. Messages from concerned viewers started to flood the screen. A dear friend of the victim and the live stream viewer informed the police. So 
suicide videos, rape live streams, and minor exploitation among the allegations. Periscope was officially shut down in March 2021. On March 31st, 2021, the mobile application has been removed from Google Play Store and iOS markets. In summary, it served as an app of degeneracy long before Twitter became that. I've got a question for you. Did you ever use Periscope when it's a popular? Or is this your first time hearing about it? Please let me know in the comment section below. I hope you liked the video. Subscribe for more. And this is Prime Excellence. Peace.